Hey, hey, hey. I'm Gare. I'm oh so infatuated with Mezcal. And this is my man Alex Deo. Yo, yo. We're here. This is Mezcal Talk. Woo! Yes, sir. Mezcal Talk. Mezcal Talk. And we're good guys. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think so. So, <laughs> we decided that. Child's Play 2 mm. would be the movie. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. dogs, they're called good guys. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not Chucky? No, well, Chucky was his name. Oh. But, like, the line of dogs are called good guys. Okay, all that's, right. I slipped that in on you. That was good. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> good. That's a fun factoid right there. Yes, yes. Pay attention to the overalls on the dog. Like, what is it, like Cabbage, cabbage Patch Kid sort of vibe? Or does it say good? He says good guys. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not that smart, I just watched in the intro, you just weren't paying oh, attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean this yeah, I mean I like the first one and I, I've seen the uh, newest one, so uh I thought it was good to grab number yeah. two. Number we two decided is cool. to throw it back a little bit. Mm hmm Something we've seen but certainly haven't seen in many, many, many a year. Very long time for me. You know. Fun little Chucky Child's Play 2 action. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course, we've got three oh-so-delectable bottles of mezcal. Yes. That will soothe us and mm -hmm. tingle our taste buds. <laughs> we've also got a pint of uh, Guinness on us. <laughs> we got the dark... dark it's a weird choice, to be honest, but... <laughs> it's a treat for me. I love it. I love it. We went from Thai food to Guinness, to now <laughs> Mezcal. Oh yeah, shout out to Gelato. We just uh, had some very, very delicious Thai food. Very spicy. Yeah, it was good, good. That Southern Thai is always very spicy. And mm -hmm. had some eel, which always makes me happy. Shout out to the eel, man. The chicken of the sea. <laughs> it is the chicken of the sea. Mm -hmm. Have we tried this one yet? Ah, uh, you place. have not. Oh yes, this is a cool looking bottle. Siete Mysteros. Mm -hmm. It looks like a Captain, Captain Jack Sparrow on it, except uh, mixed with Jack Skellington. Captain Jack Skellington. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have our usual setup this time. We have, a, we have a few cameras, but we're missing one, but I think it'll look amazing still. So. It will look amazing. Appreciate everyone giving us the feedback. Everyone says it looks good. So uh, we're going to try to keep that roll going. Yes. Thank you uh, to everyone listening. Shout out to homegirl Jackie for giving us some uh, feedback. Shout out to all of Gare's friends for you know Cha -cha. following us on the Instagram Mescal Podcast. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. Follow our YouTube, Spotify, Apple, all that jazz. Listen, watch. You know, get the full experience. You know, you can see our ugly asses. Well, we get faded. <laughs> nah, nah. This is more than just a drunk podcast. This is a, you know, this is a life podcast. We uh, we chose culture and society and culture for our genre of podcast. We did. <laughs> you know, I feel in tune with society and culture. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like society and culture, actually. You know, cultura, <laughs> as uh, the Mexicans say. And when did this when did this come out? It was probably like '96 or something. Oh, man. I, I don't know. know. We'll, we'll put that in the show notes. If you guys something have like that, it's definitely like old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any questions or anything you want to send us, just hit up uh, Mescal Podcast or sorry, what is it? Mescal Talk at Gmail dot yes. com. Mescal Talk at Mescal Gmail dot com. Hell yeah. Yeah. Ooh, thank you so much. All right, one more to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, in this bottle here. I'm going to talk a little bit more about them later on. I want to get them poured up for everyone. This is Mescalafera by Mescalateca. Ooh, that's a brand new bottle. Brand new, just cracked it open. Just cracked it open right now. This show right here is so special. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to influence uh, Alex too much. Obviously, I've tasted these prior, even though I just cracked that one up. I had had that prior in life at restaurants. So I want to get some raw opinions on the table here and then I'll jump in with a few factoids and feelings. Oh yeah, if you guys have a chance to check us out on YouTube because these bottles look sick. All the artwork on all these weeks' bottles are really, really dope. And here we've got Luminar Mezcal, is actually a Reposado, so it's mm. slightly aged. Mm. And the barrel is... Oh man, I'm so excited. 
I'm so excited. It's been a while since I've had a tasting, so. Yeah, and we're, uh, you know, we're, we've got all three of them in front of us. We've got the mm -hmm. orange and the grapefruit with Sal de Cassano to cleanse our palates in between. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we'll get to tasting them. Is this in sequence right now? Uh, yeah, it's in the sequence that I want you to taste them, which is actually maybe I should reverse this so that it's the same as the bottles in, in, in the one, two, three formation <laughs> so our lovely viewers don't get confused. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be going from left to right. <laughs> awesome. Our left to right. Yeah, stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, so we're going left to right from here? Left to right, yeah. Okay, yeah. sweet. So this one's the first one, right? Yes, sir. There we go. Salud. Salud. Cheers. Very smooth, very smooth. That's my first, first, uh, first thing I'm thinking about. Incredibly smooth. <laughs> incredible, it's so incredible. Wow. What do you think? It's good. I like it. I like it. I like this brand. I very like, mild. I like their stuff. It's a solid mm -hmm. one. It's uh, one of the. I think this is one of the more inexpensive ones of their lines. Mm -hmm. I think they kind of market it as a. a cocktail one mm -hmm. but I think it's totally you know high quality you can sip on it it's smooth as you said it's it's great and also yeah you can make it I made a Paloma with it I thought that was great Ooh, that sounds delicious wait so this is the one with the skull on it the yes. skeleton man yes yes okay beautiful man yeah this is it's very smooth yeah. I've had a few sips just now it's like a it's perfect for like a picnic or something I would say yeah. I wanted to try that for a while just recently mm -hmm. scooped up the bottle yeah Treat myself. Yeah, it's it's another notch in the collection. We're truly blessed. Truly blessed to have very good spirits. Keep our spirits high. Spirits keep us in good spirits. There you go. Because we're good guys. <laughs> <laughs> Until we turn into a murderous child. Dolls. <laughs> oh. Dude, I like Chucky. Out of all, out of uh, the horror films, Chucky is one of one of my favorites. I would say. Yeah, yeah. He's one of your your favorite uh, villains. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, are you a Brad Dourif fan in general? Which one's that? Uh, Brad Dourif is the actor who does the voice of Chucky. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, what is else it, is he in? Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. I'm not like a super enthusiast, but he was a pretty popular character actor in a lot of like quirky movies in mm. you know, the 90s, 2000s. Damn, damn, I gotta check that out. Check out his IMDb. His name is very familiar though. Yeah, I, I wish I could remember something else he was in since I brought him up, but mm -hmm. oh wow. <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Man, the set there, the set decoration in this movie is amazing. Oh yeah, the, yeah, definitely. The, the, a lot of pinks and blues, pastels, very eastery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really weird shots too. Like they get, they still make it disturbing, but yet beautiful. And they're really like I don't know if you see, but like this point of view, like it's like from the kids' point of view, so like looking up at the parents as well. Oh right, yeah, they have like a, a low angle type vibe. Very sick, very sick. Definitely influenced by like The Shining and shit. Doesn't it look like it a little bit? I could see that. I could see that. Mm. Is your mouth still tingling from that chip, Lala? No, oh, uh, it was for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I had to pause. We were gonna start. I had to chill for a second. So <laughs> I was sweating. Yeah. I love spicy food, but damn. It's good. It's good. I love it. Dude. But yeah, I still I still taste it a little bit. Yeah. I like the linger. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> we, ha we do have a few palate cleansers, though, just in case. We do, we do. I'm, uh, I'm going to move it to the next one. Yeah, I might give it a so go. So that can yap about a little bit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So today we have orange and what is that? Just chili flakes? They both have salt de gusano on them. Mm. The worm salt. Oh, yeah, it's the worm salt. Mm hmm. Mm. Very delicious. Mm, Reese grapefruit and orange. Mm -hmm. So we'll move into this one. Which one's this? Oh, wow. Never had that before. Whoa. <laughs> that is a very different taste. Yeah, I knew that that would be a different vibe for you. I need a second taste. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hmm. I don't know if I love it or not. Hmm. Is it polarizing? Yeah, it has like a weird earthy leathery taste, which is strange. It has the same profiles of a regular mezcal to me, but um, it has like this very tame, like imagine, this is weird, but imagine like licking a piece of leather. 
very clean leather. Okay, okay. And then, like, you don't have any taste of it, but it's just like body, pure body. That's that's my. I get a little question. more like almost mint. Mmm. Give it a go. Which one is this called again? So this is uh, ooh, this glass fera. Yeah, this is glass fera. It's a tobala. Okay. For the people which is a totally different uh, type of agave than this one. This one mm -hmm. is Espadin, which is Espadin's your most common mm -hmm. agave for mezcal. Mm -hmm. And this is a tobala, which is a much more rare, mm -hmm. harder to get agave. It grows on the side of mountains that are high elevation areas. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like 12 to 15 years that they have to grow before they're able to be harvested to have enough you know, sugar content in them and size in them for to be distillable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I probably asked this question before, but like, does the name of it have to do with the age at all, or is it just strictly region, or is it also like a type of agave? The name. So like, even tabalas and uh, reposados and like. Well, no, no, because you're mixing up. Well, tabala is the plant name. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. a type of agave. It's a plant name. Reposado means rested. So rested. that's just in relation to aging in a barrel. Mm -hmm. um, so two different types of vocab, God, yeah, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the but Espada and Tobala are plant names. Plant names. Plant names. Plant names. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And those are agave plants. Yes. Okay, sweet. All right, just making sure. Damn. Yeah. I mean, I've uh, taste to is totally different. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. It's a different type of taste for sure. It's. Hmm. I, I have to get a bit third taste. Hold on. <laughs> Woo! I don't know. <laughs> I I, res I can see why, I can see why some people would like it. It um, it's too distracting for me. Yeah. The taste, yeah. Very very a lot of body to it. Yeah. I'm glad I'm having it though. Yeah yeah. I mean it's like I said it's like a relatively rare you know to get the mm -hmm. bottles they they cost more they mm -hmm. they're older like there's less of them grow it takes oh, longer for them to grow mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So most mezcal is espadin. Most yeah that's yeah. the most predominant. Group grow. It's six to eight years those plants mm -hmm. usually grow, mm -hmm. so they can be harvested a, a little more quick. And gotcha, plus yeah. be more Almost double, producing. probably. Damn, that's beautiful. But there's like 30 or 40 something different types of agave plant varieties that are used to make mezcal. Mm -hmm. Espadin is by far and large the most predominant, but the, of the non Espadin ones, there's like, you know, so many of them. Mm -hmm. You know, some. You know, village here grows this, so you know different things. And then in some regions, it's like the same plant. My understanding is mm -hmm. that it's basically the same plant, mm -hmm. but they might have a, a different word for it. Mm -hmm. So if that area calls it that, that's what they're putting in the bottle. Yeah, yeah. But it yeah. could still be essentially the same plant that's mm -hmm. grown two hours away, and they use okay. a different word. Some people use, yeah, you know. When I say people, the people, yeah, like, yeah. you know, use more uh, native languages like Zapotec and stuff, and some mm. use more, you know, Spanish derivative words. This is really so. good information, man. Yeah, that, damn. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not obvious, which I like about it too. You know, it's like uh, it's mezcal is a mystery. Mezcal is a mystery. <laughs> the mystery of mezcal. Matter of fact, let's call let's rename our podcast the mystery of <laughs> mystery mezcal. Of mezcal. <laughs> And put the law and order, chung chung. <laughs> Unsolved mysteries. Mm. We need to wear like suits and like mm -hmm. talk real official. On November 3rd, I I found out about the yeah. agave. And Mr. Rodriguez was murdered in his agave plant. <laughs> <laughs> murdered with the machete mm. they were using to chop down the agave plants. Damn, that's pretty deep. <laughs> that's, 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 I want to watch that. Specific. I, I want to watch Yo, that we, now. We might have just... Spawn another career. What? <laughs> so what is this? Agave based horror movies. Oh my god. <laughs> Mescal movies. It's a whole new genre. <laughs> Agave based movies? Like what? Like, is that like Children of the Corn? It's, uh, like, you know, it's like a movie <laughs> in an agave field. It's Children of the Agave. Hell yeah. There's <laughs> a possessed rabbit. I like this. The devil rabbit is like a image in, in uh, mezcal culture. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen yeah, it in yeah. one of the bottles, I think. So, what is up with that? Zest rabbit could just <laughs> come from the sky and like kill people. Damn, they must have mad rabies or something over there. <laughs> that is terrifying. Hmm. 
It's weird. And it's weird how in different uh, religions and cultures, rabbits mean different things. Like how Easter rabbit, you know, they have like the new beginnings or whatever. Or uh, is that is that what the, the rabbit symbolizes? I think so. A, a, a white rabbit, maybe. Yeah, possibly. I think uh, well, fertility typically. Oh yeah, because they just be fucking like, like crazy. Rabbits, yeah, just yeah. be screwing like rabbits. Yeah, they're crazy. I mean, I had rabbits growing up. We had mm-hmm. some rabbits. And oh really? Yeah. Your parents had like just pet rabbits, or yeah. just yeah. yeah. Randomly, white ones. Uh, a white and a, it was originally like a whitish one and a blackish one. Okay. And I don't even remember the scenario. I don't remember it being. I was little, so I don't really know. But mm-hmm. I don't remember it being like a cognitive decision where like, oh, well, the family's gonna have pet rabbits now. Yeah. I I feel like my parents went to buy like dog food, <laughs> and my mom fell in love with some rabbits, and Aww. like, like they came home with rabbits, and I'm like, oh, we got. Rabbits now, cool. Like I loved yeah. it. Like I was a kid. My dad built like wood hutches in the backyard uh, oh, to keep beautiful. them in. And stuff. Yeah. It was started out beautiful. Oh yeah. Like, until the raping started going on, and like when they fuck like rabbits, like it's not just like they're fucking like rabbits. They're like the yeah. males, like are crazy, really like, crazy, like raping the babies. Holy like, fuck! Like, oh but, my like, god! Like we separated them, put like made a separate hutch for the males versus the females. They, but it was connected and they ate through the wood oh to get to the females. We hear them screaming at night. Like, it was out of control. It was out Damn, of control. Damn, that was, it was cute. Boring, like, like, traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> that was like adorable and so wholesome for a good four seconds <laughs> until until the pillaging. Oh, Dude, my. it was crazy. Damn, yeah. right. We ended up like selling them to a pet store eventually. Oh, yeah? There was just, you could, there was so many of them. There was the... They just kept fucking. Kept my, my dad probably would have just like fucking killed him and we ate him. Eat him. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 he's not that type of guy. He's not that he type of guy. Yeah. No, I mean one time, th- one time I uh, came home and my dad was fucking just butchering this deer on the side of my crib, and uh, apparently he fucking hit a deer and then just like put it in the back of his car and fucking drove home. That's common though, like out that way, like people would Yeah, drive. My parents were really like that, but other people in the area, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. There's a lot of hunters and mm-hmm. like, you know, people would certainly, it's, they say if it's still warm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Like it's okay. Yeah, yeah, because then the bacteria hasn't set in or anything. But I feel like he used it as a way to like get that, like, you know, because I, I don't know, if Asian parents, I don't know if you guys know, like, they're very secretive sometimes, you know, and they give you nuggets of information a lot of times, especially if they're refugees, because, like, they have really, really traumatic uh, childhoods. And, um, I don't know, man, I feel like he was just so ready to, like, yeah, just embrace, like, you know, his old savageness. <laughs> he was like, yes, I hit a deer! I can, like, now I can butcher it! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt for a second, you know, maybe. Shout out to Pops, though, man, he's a good man. <laughs> Shout out! Mr. Mindao. Mindao. Bing, 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 bing. Oh man, yeah, I, I would. This is uh, this is a very distinct flavor. I'm glad I'm having one glass of it, but I don't know if I could ever have two, two, in a row. Good, good, good. Good to know. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. You want to do the next one? Yes, yes. This one is the uh, Siete Mysterios. No, 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 no. It's this one. Oh, the, gotcha. The, the Luminar. Sorry, guys. This is the Luminar. And this is a Reposado. Shout out to the Reposado. Cheers, Cheers, my friend. Yes, Cheers sir. to the audience. Ooh, that one's good. Black pepper taste? A little bit? I hate a little black pepper. I definitely taste a little wood, like mm-hmm. a little bit of the, like, mm-hmm. the reposado aging. Mm. Yeah. I have like this black pepper taste, but it's very not smoky. It's not it's smoky. Not, it's not that smoky, that one. It's yeah. true. Sweet. This one's not that smoky either. No, it's not. But the they, all, they all have a hair, but this one is the most of the bunch. But none of these but are like pal- no, none smoky. of them pal smoky. Yeah, I would say all of these have like the minimal amount of smoke for mezcal. Mm-hmm. But man, this one is a treat. Uh, I would say if you like like uh, schnapps or something like that, you might like this one a little bit more. Leaning. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> it's, it has the taste is nothing like schnapps, but like it has that hint of sweetness, and um, yeah, it's just man, that's a distinct type of flavor. I really like this one. It's interesting. So this is why I like to mm. hear, hear these opinions, mm-hmm. and get the unbiased flavor profiles. Now, this one, I'm not gonna say that I hate it. Really? But I don't like it. Really? 
Okay. <laughs> All right, we yeah. have a clash of opinions right now. Yeah. Fuck you, dog. <laughs> no, never buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> or anything from this brand. Really? <laughs> Why do you say that? I don't, it doesn't taste right. Like, it's okay. I it's like, like it. It's terrible. I like it. I already know, like, so far I have an opinion of uh, first, second, and third place. I'll give this one second place. And it's strange because the first one that we tried is probably the least expensive one, huh? This is by far the least expensive Oh, really? Okay. See, this, this, this shit, I didn't know this when I bought it. He's so disrespectful right now. This shit right here. <laughs> I don't know, this is made by Kimosabe, which is like one of the like commercial like mezcal makers. It's Kimosabe? Yeah, it's like one of the old school, one of the original mezcals from back in the day. Is that a Chinese or Asian, Japanese? I think it's a Japanese okay. thing, yeah. Hey, Kimo Sabe. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. It's it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't say that it's artisanal on it. Mm. And the way mezcal works is that there's regular mezcal, which would be probably industrial made. And then there's most mezcals, uh, artisanal mezcal, which is not industrial made. And then there's ancestral mezcal, which is made like, super old school clay pot like mm -hmm. uh early you know native way mm -hmm. so and so by far artisanal is the majority of it mm -hmm. so that one doesn't say artisanal on so i'm pretty sure it's industrial so that means it's made in a, in a more yeah commercialized way a little closer to how uh tequila is made mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't and also i think similar to tequila they can put Again, I'm not the expert on this, but I there's, can put like some minute amount of additives in there mm. and it's still considered, you know, mezcal, whereas an artisanal, they can't, it's like pure, like it's, it's only mezcal. So I don't know, it just tastes like, hmm. I mean, and, and the, your schnapps comment, which I think is interesting, is almost maybe speaking, like Too maybe bad. there's yeah. like I'm a not a schnapps guy hair, though. like a sugar or a hair yeah. or something in there to give it that little bit of like sweet woody flavor i mean wood does bring some sweetness mm. to the table so it could be just the, the reposado but i mean i don't know i don't I, know i don't know the right word pungent's not it but it's like it does have that black peppery vibe yeah I mean, like, that's a common vibe in mezcal mm. generally speaking. but it's it's like poof like you know it's like in like it's like a shotgun of black pepper as opposed to like a like imagine black pepper mixed with sugar even you know how it's like it's a lot of profile and you don't really know what you're you don't really know what to um latch onto maybe does that make sense like it's like it has three different profiles which is black pepper sweetness and a tiny bit of like the mezcal smoky and regular body to it mm -hmm. but you can't latch on to either of them because they're all of them are a little bit like um overbearing maybe but i think like that could be uh, a plus to some people you know the same people that like like uh it might it might be like a gateway mezcal like yeah gateway mezcal yeah, yeah there you go like somebody that uh you know doesn't it doesn't have a ton of distinct flavors mm -hmm. like it doesn't you know grab you as much as some others with like this is herbal or this is mm -hmm. mineral yeah, this yeah. is smoke this is very not it's, herbal it's, this one it's yeah. more you know it has its notes but it's not none of those notes are yelling at you mm -hmm. they're like mm -hmm. chill notes yeah so it could be for somebody that's you know, not real well versed in mezcal, I might not want something that's too mm. in one direction or another. Mm. That could be, like I said, a gateway. Like it could be a that. mellow. It's also, um, you know, eighty proof, which oh really? Which is you know, you're to um, you know, it's light for liquors. It's common, but yeah, for mezcal, it's a little light. So it means most likely it's watered down a little. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also probably shows that uh, the type of demographic they're going for. Um, it's it's. I mean, it's probably, it's probably, yeah, it's definitely a more mainstream consumer they're going for, a mezcal mm -hmm. margarita type crowd they're probably going for. Huh, this might actually taste very good with a mar margarita. Yeah, I'm sure it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can yeah, see that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's strange. Like, um, maybe they're trying to force, like, us, because I've never, out of all the mezcal we've had, I've never tasted it with this palate. It's, like, a lot, very peppery. Hmm. Very peppery in a weird way. And I don't know if they're trying to, like, force that, like... If they're trying to like you know stand out from the other mezcals possibly you know in but you said like could be a uh what is it industrious indus industrious industrial industrial yeah like they might be like trying like you can definitely tell that it's mezcal yeah but like it's it's very um it's like a burst it that's all i could 
describe it. It's a burst. It's a burst of flavor. It's like, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's that one? Fireball, in a weird way. It's like the fireball of mezcal is possibly, in my opinion. I don't know about that. Now it's a little more extreme, I feel like. But all mezcal is fire, though. That's what I'm saying. It's like the fact that... It's like, not fireball. Yeah. Fireball is garbage. <laughs> all mezcal's balls. So, uh, <laughs> nah, this... I mean, I like it. I like it. I like it more than the middle one, at least. Give it a third. Give it a little Good, because you can't afford that middle one. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that? That bottle? I, I don't really know. It was a gift, but I mean, Ooh. easily 150 Wow. Damn. <laughs> I'm spoiled, and you guys are also spoiled. <laughs> if you want to feel spoiled, check the notes. Check them notes. I like this one a lot, though, seriously. And the uh, the middle one could suck my dick if it's 150 <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man, that's crazy. I mean, it's it's amazing to have that in your collection, though, you know. And it's definitely not an everyday one, but if you're chilling with a bunch of people that like mezcal... Yeah, might... it's, it's an acquired taste. It's not like everyone doesn't mm. want to taste that herbally minerally mm -hmm. like type of flavor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i mean who knows by the end of the podcast i might contradict myself because it's it's quick how uh, it's really amazing how quick you can acquire the taste of mezcal though yeah I mean, by far you you've tasted primarily espadins yeah a couple espadin uh with others, you know, ensembles oh, yeah, where it's uh, espadin and something else, but even those are typically predominantly espadin. It's like 70%, 30, it's not like 50-50s, oh, you know what I mean? And this one's a reposado? Oh. No, no, reposado is the aging. Oh, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. So this was what? This is espadin as well. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But definitely most uh, industrial mezcals are probably espadin, huh? Actually, I, I hold up, hold up. My, I just caught the back of the label. Here we go, here we go. This... It says it's tequiliana. What's that mean? Interesting. Well, tequiliana is like a variation on the uh, blue blue ever that's used for tequila. Mm. So maybe that's not an espadin. Hmm. Interesting. Mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery. Mezcal mysteries. <laughs> Mezcal mystery. <laughs> Either way, it's definitely like an industrial one. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm sure you guys, if, if you're listening this far into uh, the season, we are, uh, we're learning every day, which is tight, you know? Like, who knows, by the next episode we'll know, and uh, plenty more to come. I wish Chucky could, like, jump through the screen and taste this. That's, oh my god, that'd be so weird. <laughs> he, like, you know that knife, yeah. he stabs the thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. give me that! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn, dude, you need this, bro. God damn, yeah, Chucky... <laughs> So far, so far this movie's not bad. I like the way it's shot. Yeah, I don't remember any of it. I mean, None of it's yeah. like making any recollection other than Ch Chucky as a character. But it's all the same shit. The yeah, fucking yeah, doll yeah. comes to life. It stabs a motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, until until the bride and, and seed ones. Oh, obviously yeah, yeah. Was That was like a weird turn that they did for that. But, I mean, who? there aren't many horror movies that are have that many movies like eight fucking movies or some shit there's, yeah. there's a chunk but you know they're it's up not there. it's not uh every day that a movie can turn into a full franchise yeah probably what's the what's the most uh, recent one maybe uh annabelle shit you know what's annabelle I, th I think it's a part of the uh universe of the conjuring it's conjuring part of that yeah i think they're they're in the same universe really mr horror you don't know what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Saw was a recent one. The way like Saw was a yeah. lot. Um, Saw changed the, the game. The, what the Grudge and that and that other one, the the Asian ones. But there there weren't like uh, there was only two Grudges of America, I think, or maybe even one Grudge two. How long can you hold a grudge for you? You gotta, you gotta let shit let go. It go. Let it go. Just let it go. Just drink some mezcal and, and let, let it, it be. <laughs> Shout out to the Beatles. <laughs> Damn, man. Chucky, at this point in the movie, has tied this fucking kid to the bed straight up bondage. It's kind of like, yeah, it's definitely bondage. It's like... Mm -hmm. But they got this robotic CGI shit going on too, you know, like with his face expressions. Yeah, I think it's a robot. It's not actually CGI, but like, ooh, animatronics. Animatronics. There you go. Ooh, that's freaky as fuck. <laughs> this motherfucker ooh. shoved his sock in it in the kid's mouth. I like how he's got freckles. Yeah, yeah. 
No one trusts gingers. That's yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I felt bad because of all like you know. I was like, damn man, like Asian people got it bad, bro. Like currently nowadays, but I feel like ginger kids got it rough their whole entire time, you know. For sure. I've had that shit rough my entire time too, but shit. Damn, he punched the shit out of Chucky. This fucking three-year-old, five-year-old kid just fucking haymaker the shit out of him. Oh man. Do you do your taxes? I'm halfway through it. <laughs> all right, all right. It's uh, further than me. Further than me. Hey, I've been halfway through it for the past month. <laughs> <laughs> Still further though. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been so, on my like to-do list, you know. For, oh, I remember um, this time last year we were like just like each doing our taxes. I didn't do it. Oh, you did it! I remember you were like doing it. I did them in o- mine were. I think I did it in October. I, I, oh, I got, did yeah. an extension. Oh yeah, yeah. You had the uh, year and a, you, but you had to do like a year and a half worth of taxes, right? Uh, no, well, I did some of my accounting at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I was Catching already up. in it, you know, like so it wasn't. Like, but I did a year of taxes. Mm-hmm. But I was doing some accounting at the same time. What are you using, TurboTax? I don't know what I'm gonna. I, I don't know. I went to H and R Block last year. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't want to do that again because I hate them corporate fucks. Yeah, but, yeah right. Um, I might have to do it though. Shout out to my. I'm such a slacker, and like it takes me so long to even like pull my shit together mm-hmm. that it doesn't really give me a lot of room to uh, choose. But you know, you have an extra month. Oh yeah, yeah. We have until the end of May. Mid. Um, isn't May 15th? There's just one so. extra month. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I'm already... I was like... I I think I started it early, and then now I'm about to end it like late. <laughs> Fuck, well, You still got two weeks to do it on the original time if you want yeah, to get it by April I'm gonna, 15th. I'm going to get it done. I'm, uh, I'm taking a week off from everything. I'm going to be at the beach next week, so I'm uh, definitely... Uh, Beaching it up. I'm going to definitely do as much as I can while I'm there. Just hang the fuck out, man. Ooh. You can go in the water? Definitely, yeah. It's gonna be cold as fuck, but I'm definitely gonna go in. Gotta make sure to use my SPF. <laughs> I have to. Protect your skin, my friend. Protect your neck from the sunburn. <laughs> oh, this is a sweet shot. So this kid is walking through the aisles of a old school bus. And school buses are just like such a nostalgic place. Yeah. I think so. When was the last time you were in a school bus, though? Exactly, like, yeah. So, like, so that, the vision of it is nostalgic. Yeah, I, like, I haven't seen, like, the fact that you're following him through the aisle of a school bus, like, this movie is absolutely... <laughs> Chucky's hanging off the back of the school bus. <laughs> this movie is absolutely through the point of view of the kid. Like, yeah, 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 definitely through the point of view of the kid. Even, like, these shots are on the lower side. Yep, and then it's behind the fence, so it looks like they're caged in, too. This is so sick, actually. I, I need to rewatch this shit for a third time. I'm going for another pull of this bad boy right here. Mm-hmm. I'll give the, uh, you another pull of that other one because I don't like it and you did. No, thanks. <laughs> it's a good idea actually to pre pour like that. Shout out to, uh, what is that one again? That's like the skeleton one. Siete, Siete Mysterios. Siete Mysterios. It has Jack Skellington on it. Captain Jack Skellington. Yeah. A little uh, controversial Johnny Depp action. Why controversial? I mean, I don't know. Oh, I, mean, co- I mean, conflicting. There's all kinds of stuff going. I mean, you know, all the reports that he like beat girlfriend. Did he's, really? He's like an asshole on set. And, like, That's why he's broke as shit. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got, he got a. Mm-hmm. Oh, I messed up. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't he, know that there was like having a lot of shit going on the last couple of years. I knew he was broke, he, like not getting, uh, not. He got bumped out of a bunch of roles that he was supposed to be on. They booted him because oh, of wow. controversy. Man, like I knew that he uh, was broke, but they blamed it on his like his absorbent lifestyle, which could be just well, paying I, off. I think like that, you know. I mean, I'm sure it's all these things. Yeah, you know. God, he supposedly just like drinks all the time. I don't know. That well, makes sense. Not a gossip whore, but you know. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, me neither. <laughs> but I, yo, we did watch that one movie, uh, Secret Window, which was pretty good. That was interesting. That, that was, was like uh, I hadn't seen that prior to that. Is that a uh, Stephen King movie? I think it was. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. It was uh, interesting. I had uh, John Tudorow too, which is one of my favorite actors. Yeah, he's good. Mm. Wait, was he in Ghostbusters? I don't remember Ghostbusters, man. I, like, I barely remember it at all. 
when I when we went to uh, what do you call it? Um, Horror Nights. It jogged some memories. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. They had the, all the the fucking yeah. Whatever the like, the, the jetpack uh, mm-hmm. ghost killer laser, laser gun thing. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the uh, ghosts that were like popping out the walls and shit. Oh man. So, I might I might still have some uh, videos of that when we did that. If so, I'm gonna put that in the YouTube. Check it out. <laughs> no, yeah. No, there was this one ghost that popped out the wall and he gave us like a peace sign. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I probably have that in my phone somewhere. That's I'll place that in. Give you guys more reasons to uh, check out the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, please. No. Hi, Candy. Oh yeah. Oh, speaking of Candy, man, I'm excited for Candy Man. Dude, how many times we talk? We keep talking about Candy Man. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna keep on talking about it. ourselves. I know. <laughs> Maybe we'll watch the original one for one of these episodes. We should do it like right before the new Candy Man drops. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, like, within you know a couple of weeks. But mm-hmm. right before. Yeah, we're we're gonna be more current with you guys. Like, uh, by the time you hear this, if you would have heard the first couple episodes, they would have been uh, recorded within the past uh, six months to a year. But. Uh, Everything else will be current, though. Current. Hey, uh, oh, man, that's the first one that we tried is the best. The Captain Jack Sparrow one or <laughs> the skeleton one. It's fucking delicious, man. Like, this is what I want out of mezcal. It's a very even, balanced taste. It's good. I like. Ah, I, so could, I could sip on that all night long. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Uh, it's, it's engaging enough, but it's mm-hmm. not overpowering exactly. either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, mezcal is just one of a kind. It really is. One of a kind. Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. Mama really loved you. <laughs> when you grow up, you could be anything you want to be, Gare. You can be anything. If you, you can be some <laughs> jackass that talks about mezcal on the internet. Just sit on the couch. <laughs> you could do it if you really set your mind to it. <laughs> oh, man. This is... This is probably my favorite though, actually. Now that I really taste it, comparison to these ones, like, man, it's so good. The Mysterios, Mysterios, Ray Mysterio. Did you ever uh, watch um, professional wrestling or yeah. like, TV wrestling back in the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was who was your cast? Who was like the ensemble? Like the old school, like classic. WWF lineup, you know. Yeah, what was your generation? I know we were watching, so we watched a movie last night with uh, Rowdy Piper in it. Yeah, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. He was part of it, probably. Uh, yeah, Rowdy Rowdy Piper for sure. Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, mm-hmm. um, Nikolai Volkov, uh, mm-hmm. the Iron Sheik. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ricky I... the Steam, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, <sighs> Randy classic. Macho Man Savage, classic, George yeah. the Animal Steel. Um, that was all WWF. Then, if you flip over to NWA, we, mm-hmm. you had Ric Flair. Woo! Oh, yeah. Ric uh, Flair, Drip. The Road Warriors. They were definitely my favorite tag team. Mm. Uh, I forget who else was in the NWA. They weren't like. That changed the name. It was originally NWA. National Wrestling ECW? Association. It changed its name to something else. It was an ECW? ECW? Like, that was Extreme like, Wrestling? What is East I don't East know, East West remember. West what is ECW still? I don't remember. Ooh, it's gonna make me sneeze. They all changed. I mean, WWF is what WWE now, like. Yeah, yeah, all, because like, of the uh, change. The uh, wildlife. <laughs> the wildlife. Um, oh, was that why they changed? You know the WWF yeah, yeah, with, yeah, the, with the panda. panda yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why. I still call it WWF for sure. Just because, like you know, that I, st- I stopped watching it when it was WWE, and that's not because of why. It's because of uh, just got older. I, I, I don't want to alienate people. I kind of hate wrestling. Yeah. Like I, I only liked it as a kid. Like when I was you know, eight to twelve or something, it was cool. But then after that, I'm like, I don't know. Like it's mm-hmm. you know, not super big in the sports to begin with. Then it's like fake sports. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I can appreciate it now that like uh, I'm in the entertainment business, you know, and I'm like seeing how they like created a whole industry about around it. But like. Uh, Definitely, um... I mean, I'm about Glow. Oh, the TV show Glow is great, yeah. Well, the original Glow Wrestling League. Oh, the Gorgeous Ladies And as well, the TV shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Glow in a minute, but I remember loving it. I remember liking the cast. I mean, I think, I'm assuming because of the pandemic, I mean, they haven't dropped a new season. I I stopped watching it. I've seen all... I think there's three seasons. I've seen all the three seasons. Oh, wow. 
I mean, dude, I, I could be wrong, but I think it's three. You know what? I'm gonna check that back out again because dude, Mark fucking Marin, he's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you gotta mention one of the women, though. You, can't, you know, you, the only thing you really fuck with is the, the only dude in it. <laughs> no, no. I think I actually referenced that because we had seen him live Definitely, together. Yeah. So I, it was like I, more I, like take you. I'm saying like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like no, he's my favorite. And plus, also they they brought out a lot of women that weren't big stars. But they had the whole. It's, it's a sick ensemble cast. Yeah, like yeah. it's a great cast. Like everybody like. Dude, brings everyone, their own nuance yeah. and like mm-hmm. character and they're all yeah. memorable as well like they're not they're not really forgettable and that, that could be just because of the characters that they also play in it mm-hmm. as well but like you like mark Marin is actually like a fucking like you know he's a household name at this point after he like he got that fucking role after he interviewed obama and in his fucking oh, relationship really? not directly after but like he oh, was okay. already well known well I mean, it's he had a netflix deal so i'm assuming that was part oh, of probably you know, yeah he had he did the podcast show where they're following his podcast on, you know. No, no, that was on uh, IFC. Oh yeah, that right, was on right, IFC. Right, but right. I think I don't know. But he did do a couple Netflix. Things, yeah, like, you know. he has a Thinky Pain, which is his special. Thinky Pain. <laughs> That's a funny ass name. Thinky Pain. And um, yeah, I forget. He's in another show as well. I think he's in a uh, Almost Famous. With uh, he plays like a manager in there. I think. I don't, know, I don't think I've seen it. Almost famous, I forget. Uh, well, it's like some like rock and roll thing. Or something? I think it, I don't know if it was Chris Farley, but it was like yeah, it was like about like musicians that were like making it big or something like that. I forget. I'll have to give it another go. Hmm. Can we talk about this movie for a second? Because like that last murder scene was terrible. <laughs> like fucking. It's not how you want to die. Oh, uh, I mean, I'd rat. I mean, I've been there because fucking Chucky was like murdering this teacher with a yardstick. You've been murdered with the yard stick? I mean, my ass has been murdered with Whoa! Stick. Yeah, man, that shit leaves some marks, probably, yo. Fuck the Catholic, Catholic school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. No, nah, no, nah, the Catholic school I went to didn't really do that, but my dad would smack me. Not with a yard stick, but with, uh, you know, some chopsticks with, like, some fucking... Uh, actually, if we're drinking mezcal, it should be the chancla. The fucking... The, the flip-flop. You know what Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The chancla... Like it's like an Asian thing, right? No, no, it's a, it's a Hispanic thing. Oh, is it? The chancla, the funny meme is like when, when the mom grabs the chancla, like takes it off her foot and throws it like across the room and smacks them. Like, like, don't do that. Like, like expert. Like, yeah, yeah, like a fucking Australian and a boomerang. <laughs> oh, man. We good. Shout out to... Uh, I don't think I've ever been beaten with a flip-flop before. It seems like better or worse, best. you know. I, maybe I would have deserved it. Maybe I'd be a better person today if I was beaten with a flip flop. It's a lot of service area for a fucking beating with them. <laughs> I remember my um, my step grandfather saying that his mom would beat him with a frying pan. Damn, damn, <laughs> damn, man! That shit was cast iron <laughs> back then too. Old school time, oh. don't play, yo. <laughs> That was not, that wasn't a Teflon. That was cast iron, probably, man. Fuck, dude. <laughs> Shout out to your pa, man. Grandpa, Grandpa pa was head or hard. Fuck Beat it. down. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's a rough one, man. That's a very, very rough one. Shout out to all my kids that, uh, one of the last generations of Capital. What was that called? What is that? Capital no, not <laughs> What is that, like electric chair and shit? I think so. Or like, yeah, injection, lethal injection. Oh, I'm talking about uh, just beating your kids. Yeah, discipline, physical discipline. <laughs> <laughs> acceptable beating of children. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to beat one time acceptable beating of children. Yeah, I'm only... No, I'm not going to beat my fucking kids. No? No, no I mean, Tag I would... Them. That's a tough one. It's just a very tough one. I'm like, I'm probably not gonna do it. No. Not not no spanking whatsoever. No kind of contact. No, no, I don't think I can. I mean, maybe like a maybe like a smack in the butt, like you know, just to show them the fear of God, but not like, not like enough where it's like crying and know they're crying and shit. It's like you know, like. All right. So would you stop your foot and act like you're gonna hit him? <laughs> no, never. No, 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 no. I don't think so. I think <laughs> fucking pussy. What's wrong with America? Beats their kids anymore? <laughs> Gay? <laughs> no, 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 like I, I, yeah, I can't do it. I read too many psycholo- psychological books, psychology books, to know that that shit doesn't work. So, if your kid is like bad, mm-hmm. 
and stepping all over you and just like not listening. No, he ain't not stepping listen, over me. No, not listening. There's like just will not adhere to discipline. Will not yeah. adhere to like basic normal rules. Like nothing crazy. Uh-huh. Like you know, like pleasant, like uh-huh. normal house rules that anyone would have. Yeah, yeah. Kid just not listening. Uh huh. Eight nine years old. Won't fall in line, just belligerent, mm-hmm. disrespectful, mm-hmm. sloppy, dirty, like the whole nine. Damn, dude, what? Are you doing? what? Yo, what? Yo, you do not have I mean, your kid. kid. You know what I mean? You're a fucking <laughs> shitty ass kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Uh, so, uh, yeah. You've um, done everything, you're at your wits end. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna feed him jalapeno peppers. Interesting. Until. Raw or cooked? Or pickled? Ooh, that's a good question. Now, no, that turned into a treat all of a sudden. <laughs> um, I would make sure. Uh, I, I, I'd like to think that I could have the communication skills. I'd be able to talk to him. Maybe I'll take away his PlayStation Ten or whatever it is at the time. You know, it's, <laughs> I'm gonna be like later, older. Um, yeah, I'd probably, uh, I'd probably give him a stern talk to his dudes. Talking to your parents sucks, yo. <laughs> so it's like you know you're gonna have to sit with me for an hour. I'm gonna have to talk to you. And you know that's that's worse than getting smacked, yo. Honestly, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I probably have to do that. What about you? What, what type of uh, punishments are you given? I mean, I don't tend to have children, so it's hard to like mm. really imagine. And I don't. I have the luxury of being like, I can ask yeah, you I these know. questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what about the dog? What about a dog? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna shove his face into his shit and stuff. If he shits in the crib. I, I would not do that. You have I'm not, to. I'm yeah. not gonna say that I wouldn't do that. I'm not gonna say that I wouldn't hit a dog. Like I wouldn't like beat a dog. Yeah. Like there's a difference between beating something and discipline. For sure. Yeah. You well, know, like, you can know. we agree that like no, nothing should ever be beaten? <laughs> right. Yeah. Very good. God damn, we should have said that in the beginning. Actually, <laughs> we're getting somewhere here. <laughs> no beatings. No, we uh, rolled that no one out. No full throttle beating. No like. haymakers to your eight-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's it's Chucky. You know what I mean? Oh man, you know, like, Chucky's getting this work, bro. Chucky's <laughs> getting this fucking one-two, bro. I'm fucking karate chopping the shit out of Chucky, yo. Ooh. I'd rip Chucky's head off. Mm. For sure. Dude, this Chucky is very scary. Ooh! <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, I forget that you can't see this, but... Man, Chucky is fucking up the kid's dad, though. This is like Home Alone if it was a horror movie. <laughs> Why do we always end up talking about Home Alone? <laughs> you love Home Alone. I do love Maybe Home you Alone. love Macaulay Culkin. No. No, <laughs> I like... Do you have a soft spot in your heart for Macaulay Culkin? No, 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 no. I mean, I have a soft spot for Home Alone 1. I don't even fuck with Home Alone 2. That's how much I love Home Alone 1. <laughs> I had high hopes, and those hopes got broken. Did so. you? Were you crying in the movie theater at Home Alone 2? Dude, no. I don't, I don't even, I barely even remember Home Alone 2. I just know that Donald Trump's probably in it. Um, boo. 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 <laughs> no, man. I Yeah, I just... No. Like, why are you fucking... When you were little, did you wish you did, that you were... That's what this is. You were like, I want to yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. fuck up That's burglars. What... I want to be the badass kid. Every kid wants their independence, right? Yeah. And they want to feel like they're an adult. They feel like they do whatever mom and dad does or siblings do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and halfway through the movie, he goes to the store. He buys his own milk and shit. He buys his own toothbrush. And then fucking half, like, while he's walking home, the bags break and rip and all the products, like, fall on the ground. It's like, damn, he really got the real adult experience. That's what life is like after the age of, uh, 25. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> and worse and worse and worse. You no, don't but- have mommy and daddy buying you G.I. Joe's. Fuck. <laughs> That's why your parents would always be like, you better help me with these fucking groceries, because... That's what happened to them, probably. Ooh. Man. Have you ever seen that movie Small Soldiers? I don't think so. Nah, what nah. is that? Be too old for that. It's pretty much as if G.I. Joe's came to life. It was, uh, you ever see Indian in the cupboard? No. Nah. 
Damn, man, that was in the nineties too. Well, Indian fucking. in the cupboard. Where they throw the they threw the toys into the cupboard and then you close it and you open it up and they become alive. It's like the Indian or the Native American and some cowboys and then they're all like talking. Any up. cupboard, like it was a magic. No, cupboard. it was a magic cupboard. Yeah, and then they put like he put like the plastic Native American toy into it, closes it, opens it up, and it's like a real Native American dude, and he's just like, you know. Okay. It's okay. Good, good ass movie for real. Good ass movie. Kids movie, but fucking so uh, involves imagination a lot. But it was badass. Like, it didn't like seem like a kids movie. I like those. Let me tell you how much I like grapefruit. How much? A lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. On a scale of one to ten. <laughs> Eight point five. There you go. And there you go. That's I a lot. Like, I didn't like grapefruit until like two years ago or something. Really? I didn't like grapefruit really at all. I didn't really fuck with it. You think it's because you're drinking with it? Maybe. That's good. That's I think good. one of the things that turned me around was grapefruit mimosas. Oh, yeah. Just like, I'd rather drink grapefruit than orange. Not when it's super bitter, when it's the right grapefruit, when it's got the touch of bitter, but it's still kind of It's sweet. always bitter, yeah. It's always bitter, but then there's some that you bite in here and you're like, oh my god, this is the yeah, fucking yeah. nastiest it's bitter, bitter shit I've ever tasted in my life. Yeah, from and front it, to end, yeah. it's bitter, yeah. But a good grapefruit turns bitter towards the end. Yeah, it has like, it's sweet and refreshing at first, and mm-hmm. then gets kind of bitter. I fuck with a lot of like, just like food and drinks and anything that like has like an experience as you eat it. Like it's like... One, two, three, it has like a pacing to it. Eat it sweet, chew it, turns a little bit bitter, you swallow it, and then it has like this aftertaste in the mouth. Fucking good. I had this cocktail recently that was like built this way that, and with like a ton of crushed ice and like a tall glass. Mm-hmm. And it had two, I don't remember the juices, but it had two different uh, juices, and one was more mm-hmm. like a uh, nectar, so it was heavier, Ooh. and one was a juice, so that when you drank from the bottom, it had the more nectary flavor. Oh, gotcha. And then if you like pull the straw up past like the, all the crushed ice, the top had this like more like frothy, orangey flavor. Oh, really? It was good. Did it have different colors? I mean, it was all a yellowish, orangeish. It was like a like a darker to a lighter orange. Mm, mm. That sounds delicious. Fine yeah. cocktail. Yeah, I went to uh, that soju spot or that bar right next to um, Tobang, yeah. Tobang, mm-hmm. and then yeah, I got that really really nice soju, and uh, it came with this green matcha tea, and it had like one of those like pours. So did, was it like? separate like the tea was separate from the soju or you're supposed to drink them as one thing uh i think you're supposed to drink them all together so he, they brought out the big fifth of um soju and uh it's this isn't the normal soju it's not in the green bottle it's like it looks more like a bottle of gin or something like that and um and it comes out with like uh the big pour of matcha of green tea and also a bucket of ice so that each cup gets like a decent amount of ice and it's just, man, you could barely taste it with the matcha. So it's almost like a green tea mixed drink? Yep, yep, yep. It's uh, cocktails, I guess. Just like a weird, uh, just fucking good, man. And I, I would drink it early, though, because uh, matcha does have caffeine in it as well. If you're I would old. drink that, yeah. I'm about that green tea matcha life. You gotta hit up uh, Chapman Plaza soon, man. Flash out. The Plaza. I love K-Town. Why do you love K-Town? I like to be a part of the majority. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that like the overarching feeling? Um, no, no. Uh, especially in our side, we're like, you know, like, we're it's more like, Latin. Yeah, yeah. Like, once you go past Third Street, like, towards, uh, I guess we're towards Little Bangladesh or some shit like that. Um, it's pretty much just like a regular, like, Hispanic neighborhood, but... Once you get towards like Sixth Street, it's almost all Asian. But I was at Chapman Plaza. It's almost half, uh, half like white people, and actually not white people, just half everything else and half Asian, which is a cool vibe too. I've never been in the majority, so it's nice. Word. I don't know what that feels like to not be in the majority. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're a different type of white boy, though. <laughs> I guess walking around here, I actually am not in the majority. I mean, it's pretty loud. No, yeah, you're and not in the majority. Our five, six block radius, it's hella Latin. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it, it... But I don't feel like, at the same time, I don't... Yeah. There has been times I've gone to places where I did not feel like the majority. I yeah. felt like, oh. Yeah, Like, yeah. I'm definitely a minority, which is a rare feeling, uh-huh. you know, as a white male. Like, I've, there's only been so many times in life where I've felt like... 
I'm definitely in the minority here. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel that, even though I am theoretically in these five block radius for sure. But it doesn't feel that way when I'm walking down the street. Mm-hmm. Like I don't feel it. As well, much I mean, as you some still- other situation. I, I remember a specific time being in uh, this is in the Bronx and mm-hmm. it's a very Latin area, and I felt like. I was yeah. in the minority. You know, like, yeah, it felt was. painstakingly obvious I was in the minority and probably not particularly wanted. Yeah. <laughs> like, I felt like I wasn't, like, just, you know, looked at in a certain way. Yeah. Whereas around here, like, I don't, I don't feel like any, I'm just some dude on the street. That's what's <laughs> lit about K-Town because no one's the majority in a weird way. Like, you know, especially, well, Asian people, if you're, if Asian people are the majority, they still humble themselves to feel like, you know, they don't want to, they don't want anyone else to feel like they're the minority, you know? And... I feel like they do it extra where it's like Asian people just mind their own business, they do their own fucking thing. Asian Americans. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I actually never been to Asia, so I, yeah, I can only speak on Asian Americans. But, um, yeah, I think, like, it's it's dope. Like, no one really feels unsafe surrounded by Asian people, I think. And it's maybe a, a plus off the model minority complex. I used to DJ at this club in South Philly yeah. that was uh, an after-hours club. Mm-hmm. Whether it was legal or not, I'm really unsure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was mostly frequented by Asian gangbangers. Really? And I did Shit. not really feel safe. Oh, <laughs> just to counteract your statement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't feel like I was going to die at any given moment. But like it was clear that you were yeah. DJing from 2 to 5 a.m. in South Philly to gang members. <laughs> yeah. Really? So it felt like what it was what's the place honestly can't even remember the name no. of it okay do you remember the corners i had to call i had to phone a friend yeah daryl where did you book me out all those years ago i can't uh, remember <laughs> that's hilarious oh man it, and i'm pretty sure it doesn't exist anymore like mm-hmm. it's not there yeah i mean i yeah i, I think my coat's still in there your coat? Yeah. Your co- nice you left bed. a jacket there? It was in the coat room. Oh, man. But it was like an unattended coat room. Yo, yo, shout out and rest in peace to all the fucking best coats that we've lost. Like, I've that lost a nice coats. Calvin Klein winter coat. I've, I've lost I've lost <laughs> coats like that before, man. Fuck. You think they wouldn't steal a DJ's coat? Oh, of course they will, dude. They, you're, you're, you're not paying attention. <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, it's the perfect crime. Oh, true. If they knew it was me, I probably was paying less attention than somebody that's on the floor. True, yeah. Damn, man. And it's weird because uh, a lot of winter coats look the same, too. Was it a pea coat? No. Yeah. It was like a puffy, not like a super puffy, but like yeah, a yeah. puffy winter coat. But also where the coat room was was like close to the entrance. And where the DJ booth was was like the opposite Yeah, you could have grabbed couch. all the coats probably yeah. and, like, and just walked the fuck out if you really wanted to. Oh, man. Uh, dude, I don't rest in peace coats that sucks man I, I have rest a in peace to all the people that have stolen coats oh, oh, yeah. you're dead yeah. <laughs> yeah. you stealing coats man you're a fucking piece of shit because I've definitely got my coats stolen I've gotten all my boat bikes that I've ever had stolen really all of them every single bike that I've I mean I keep them for a long time you know and then they eventually get stolen but uh, I just got a new fix here it's nice it's not bad make sure I uh Pay attention. You got that bike life now. Bike life, yes. Yeah, yeah. My legs are getting strong as fuck. Check it out on the camera, yo. Ooh, look <laughs> at them muscles. <laughs> Cut to the ladies. Back. Here we go. <laughs> Best gal talk singles moment. Yeah. Oh my gosh. DM for a day with Alex. Swipe right. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. If, if we have any women, maybe we could do a raffle. We could raffle off a day with Alex. I mean, that's, yeah, that's fine, it's cool, you know, as long as you pay we'll do a it. private, well, it's not a date, it's a private tasting. God damn. <laughs> oh, this is getting, this is getting risky. Hey, it's delicious. Man. God damn. What are they tasting at the private tasting? Uh, you're going to get some Tobala, <laughs> some Espadan, and a mouthful of beep. Poke. Poke? Poke. Poke. Egg roll. No. <laughs> Mescal nerds will get will get the joke there. Yeah, I'm not a nerd. <laughs> fucking nerds. You fucking dweebs. There's uh, poke is like kind of like a 
I think it's like the original before mezcal was like kind of like a beer, like a fermented sap mm. from the agave before they learned how to distill it into spirits, um, which they pretty much learned from like when Spain came and conquered and they got extra like processes from them. Prior mm. to that, they were fermenting it closer to how beer is fermented. So they oh, wow. ferment the sap and make like a, you know, a low alcohol beverage that they oh, would I sip see. on and get drunk similar to like a beer Ooh. but it was since it was like sappy it was kind of thick and white and creamy yeah <laughs> so. it's a little it's a little uh it's a little yeah i don't know i'm you know I'm it's like, good i got nothing to say for that Paul. it's good for the private tastings there you go every private tasting with the sappy white shit <laughs> wipe your mouth off though mm. wipe your mouth <laughs> oh Ugh. What do you like out of all these three, though? Let's get a little, uh, let's get a little order going on, top three. Or, sorry, in consecutive order. What's the best? I mean, those two are really different. So to say Very best, different. you know, it's hard to say. Favorite? Out of all. Like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, like, what you want now, just in general, like. You know, I've been, like, kind of on a Tabala kick lately. Mm. So... I'm trying to learn more about the Dabalas and like the profiles even mm. in that world because again even in each agave there's a, could be a fair amount of distinction mm. not just going from an Espen into a Dabala like one brand's Dabala one region's Dabala to another's it's still going to be quite different mm. so I've been kind of trying to tackle the different agaves like plant by plant and getting a little more knowledge mm. so Dabala is one that I've been on for the last few months trying to Ding in a little bit more. It's a, a little bit more of an expensive habit. Yeah. So there's only so knowledgeable I'm probably going to be at the moment, but I have between the, some bottles purchased and then trying flights and stuff out at places, I've been delving more into the Tabala world. So I'm, I'm going to go there just because, you know, it's. That's a, the middle one? Yeah. Okay, it's gotcha. The unique beast of the bunch mm. here. Significantly more expensive, too. Yes. Like a lot more expensive. Over double the price, probably. Uh, well, this is probably like 30 bucks. Yeah, this yeah. is like 45 yep. for something, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. And then I again, I'm not entirely sure, I'm just mm -hmm. 150 ish. Yeah, I think the price doesn't determine the, the how good of a flavor it is, it's more of distinction of a flavor more than anything. Yeah, and, and the price, they're also, I mean, this bottle is obviously not trying to be some fancy shit, they're not trying to be fake Belvedere, like, mm. it's not marketing, that's not, that doesn't cost more because it's Don Julio, mm. it costs more because it, takes longer to it was, yeah, it was like a plant that took 12 to 15 years to grow and some guy had to go outside of a mountain to fucking pull it down and then like, it took, you know, that plant is small compared to an Espadin, it takes more of those plants to make that bottle than it does, you know, uh, there's all these factors, it's just uh, natural, natural mm -hmm. evidence of the plant that makes it cost more. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're trying to be fancy. It's just literally a more rare product, a more rare plant. And I'm glad I'm really glad you brought this up because also I've been thinking about like a lot of like America's values and shit and the fact that like we're so detached from everything that we consume. Like we're we don't understand the process of anything that's made for us. Like our food, our content, our movies, our the alcohol. Like we don't really think about how it got to our plate or in our cup or in front of our eyes and um by nature if you're a fan of mezcal you're almost like a fan of just artisan in general i feel like yeah i mean there's definitely a hand but in hand nature to certain things a lot of the mezcal brands have sustainability practices there's brands that like that's a part of their branding it's a part of the mm -hmm. mo mm -hmm. and the because they believe in it and because they know that their audience believes in it too like and this shit won't literally won't be around in 10 years if people don't take it serious mm -hmm. because it's blown up in success and the desire for it and the amount of bottles that are exported to america in the last five years is mm -hmm. so much higher than before supersedes and the if you know some of the farmers and some of the maybe some of the middlemen that are short-sighted if they're not paying attention it's like just trying to make one oh shit this is popular this wasn't popular before we need to capitalize on this sell it to america sell it to america but like it might not be there if, if, if there's not is savvy intelligent and simply caring or even people worse. to plant things like there's certain mm -hmm. brands that their initiative is they plant six 
plants for every one that they harvest. That's beautiful. You yeah. know, because they're trying to sustain the land, sustain the country, sustain their mm -hmm. grandson who's going to carry on the, the you know, distillery uh, and the so process important. and the product. You know, and we need to have these things. It's not... It on it's not like whiskey. It's not like mm -hmm. corn. You can't you mm -hmm. can grains. You can't just grow some more in six months. And it, like those things are more about the age in the barrels and sitting in a barrel. Can you find a barrel or find a place to put yeah. a barrel? This it's like it's, no. it grows in the ground, mm -hmm. it, in a certain area, and it tastes good because of the soil and the rain. It's 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 just gotta grow. It's just gotta be its own thing, or else mm -hmm. we won't have a product. Yeah, man. It's that's that's very important because. Uh, everything that is done in the whole entire world is done by what is perceived necessity. So like if we, if say we just like really just ran through it, it's a gigantic boom in mezcal and oh shit, we're running out of uh, agave plants, espadin, like material, the source materials for espadin is the balas, then they're going to be forced to be more industrial mezcals probably, right? Well, some of them would just go away for years you know yeah. like if it doesn't oh, grow yeah, for 15 away for years and you over harvested it and didn't plant enough mm -hmm. like it's just gonna be gone for an x amount of time either that or like but during that time it's susceptible to be like bought over uh by big companies and stuff sure yeah sure. that's very I, 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 uh, someone I'm, I'm i'm refusing i've been thinking about this the whole time here mm -hmm. that uh, i'm refusing to look at my phone but i remember mm -hmm. just reading the other day oddly enough that you said that someone big just invested in siete mysterios in the really? last week like that's I'm, my favorite it like, like 50 percent like somebody big just took a 50 percent a may, maybe not 50 percent mm -hmm. but i think it was 50 but it was significant whatever it was okay. somebody in the last week just jumped in on that brand and took like a significant stake to make that brand like uh bigger like some bigger corporate brand partner i mean i'm glad i i hope so i mean it's 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 conflicting to say because you never know how this shit will end up, ever end up but man like that's probably my favorite i was gonna say like if i could get a little another splash of that one that one's fucking delicious man a shout shout out to the captain jack skellington it's very fucking delicious though man. seriously out of all three of these and this is the for the those that care this is the uh doba yesh doba yesh you see that in the bottom there? That's that's this variety. Okay. Dubyish. That's this variety. -ish. There's they have like six or something. They have quite a few on mm -hmm. um, this brand, and that's this one. Mm -hmm. Man, that's it's such a balanced flavor. This, this is the glass. Uh, right here. Right here. Uh, actually, no, it's this one. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. I shall. Uh, Ooh. So you're gonna go for the middle one, and I'm guessing the. Uh, this one's definitely last. Yeah, yeah. Definitely so last. the Mysterios. But if you had to do one for like just like uh, you know, like this would be my a uh, more drinkable day. Yeah. day. I wouldn't drink this every day, because uh, it's such a distinct yep. flavor that like it's not it doesn't go with everything you know mm -hmm. I may be eating or everything I'm feeling like. Mm -hmm. And there's a little part of me that's also because it's a rare plant. I don't think I even if I loved it, I don't think I should drink it every day. Because respect it, you know, like I, I sh it costs a lot and it doesn't grow that quick. Like, I mm -hmm. it's not that's not an everyday beverage, it just mm -hmm. simply isn't. Like, there's not enough plants for it to be an mm -hmm. everyday beverage. And so, even if, I don't think it tastes like an everyday beverage, but even if it did, I would probably be more conservative with it. Well, that's it's also pricey, too. So, yeah. it's like a, it's a uh -huh. special, you know, it's a special yeah. bottle. That bottle will be, I would want to have that on a special day, you know, on, on a mm -hmm. whatever special might be, you mm -hmm. know, or if I wanted to, to give myself my own tasting and have uh, two, four Tobalas mm -hmm. and really compare and like taste them and like, you know, be qualitative and judge it. I really want to know what the real ingredients are for it because I've never tasted that body feeling taste before. Like I don't know why leather comes to mind, but like I mean, it, there's no it's a, there's no ingredients. It's yeah, a, it's just it's the way it's still it's, still still? Still? Agave. Uh -huh. it's that plant and the like the ground that it grew in. Wow, damn, it's so pure. Yeah, truly blessed, y'all. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. No, thanks for uh, you know. Including. Always. Ooh, damn. That Mysterio's delicious, though, man. Let me tell you. Fuck, man. That's fucking delicious. It's. Fuck, that's delicious. Fuck. Shout out to Action Bronson. Pow, pow, pow. Shout out to Vice. Shout out to Alchemist. <laughs> I saw that uh, Action Bronson just released an episode um, 
where he was at a gym. He's he lost like 130 pounds since quarantine started. Really? Fucking a shitload of weight, bro. Is he still big though? He's still fucking big. Yeah. But like you know, but like you know, it's like it's it's noticeable still. And um, yeah, he has this funny ass trainer that's big as shit. But he like cooks these stuffed fucking like stuffed uh, squid or something like that. Uh, it's I think it has Italian meal. I forget what it's called. But Bacaba or something like that, maybe something different. I don't know what it's called, but um, he's at the gym with this tiny little grill outside, <laughs> and he's just like, he's like, yeah, I made this shit last night, you know, prepped it. After he does this vigorous ass workout, he's just in the middle of the parking lot, just <laughs> cooking this fucking squid, and all the people start coming outside smelling it because he's sticking up the entire gym, <laughs> like all the smoke is going into it. And um, but he announces that he's like, yeah, like this is just me. I'm funding everything right now, like not have to do with Vice, like. I'm guessing because Vice, uh, their budget got cut or something like that probably during COVID. But um, it was like 10 minutes long. It's pretty good. It's not as like... Did he, did he say that he was trying to be healthier or... Oh, well, that was the thing, yeah. Well, he was just like, yeah, like I'm trying... The way he says, I'm trying to be a fucking beast or... You know, he says some shit. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's the eye of the tiger. He's just, you know, he's, not, he's never talking about like health or blood pressure yeah, it's, or it's a metaphor yeah. and, f- and funny like <laughs> yeah yeah he just goes so heavy into it but it was mad expiring man like i it, i watched it and it um it put a battery behind my back for sure shout out to that man big dude man he probably lost your whole body weight <laughs> yeah definitely no exactly but not just that like when you're that fucking big like there's a lot of muscles just by nature you know like because you have to carry it you know and like when you cut down on weight like that, man, you're a fucking beast, man. That's I really, really, really respect that for sure. How is Chucky bleeding? I mean, How is a dog bleeding? He got a he has a nosebleed. He's bleeding from his wrist right now. Oh, uh, like I'll take the possessed dog. Possessed yeah, I'm not doubting yeah, 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 a possessed yeah, yeah, dog. You yeah, can yeah. possess a dog. Possess or a dog, yeah. and it shouldn't bleed. <laughs> See, yeah, 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 yeah. You can kill it. But, and does it really make it any better to have the blood there? You know, like, wouldn't it be funnier in a way if it was just like, and it was just like, like plastic there, you know? It could be a little funny. Woo! This is, this, this ending is pretty crazy, though. They're in, so they're right now, they're in a Chucky factory where a lot of the dolls are made. And the good guys. The good, yeah, yeah, the good guys. The kid and the mother. And, um, they're like literally finagling their way through uh, all these crazy contraptions that like smashing like things of steel like they're just crawling through speaking it speaking of smashing Smash. what do you think of the mother oh she's pretty cute i mean i like uh, i like women that are uh, what do you call that not androgynous <laughs> she's like uh, who, what's the girl from terminator 2 uh, sarah yeah, yeah, Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor, I forget. Like, she bad as shit. She a Sarah Connor type. Yeah, not quite as muscular. Maybe like I guess the, in their original Terminator when mm-hmm. she wasn't as muscled out. Terminator Two, she wasn't that muscled out. No, no. But I mean, like, it'd be weird if I was into like girls with mad muscle, right? Like, I'm not that husky. I'm, I'm not trying to fuck with no American gladiators. No, nah, you sure? <laughs> hey, remember that show American Gladiators? I forget. No, the. the it was like awful, like real muscled out, like men and women. Oh, they yeah. would like just walk on this crazy like thing while it's looping around or jump in this. I don't know. It was just some awful like show. Yeah, that shit needs to be a comedy. You need it. It pretty much was, yeah. but Did they had the sound effect like, though, like. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> It was almost like, remember that, that Japanese thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. like that, but like pseudo more serious. <laughs> and MXC's. they weren't, those are like kind of regular people. Yeah. These are like muscle bad yeah, yeah. motherfuckers. Oh, it's way funnier to fucking make fun of muscle motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they were wearing crazy, like sh- <laughs> shiny, like leotard outfits oh, and stuff. Hell yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. Man, I, I like MXC a lot. Feeling a little tipsy right now. Right? Okay. Not like drunk, but you know, the tastings are very tasteful. <laughs> very tasteful lineup today. Tasteful tastings are making me feel tasty. Yeah, man. I mean, this is truly a blessing. It's a true blessing because these are three very good bottles. I'm glad you're enjoying them, sir. Thanks. And I hope you guys are enjoying our nonsense banter. Hey, yo. Hey. Nonsensical. 
It makes sense if you're uh, from the tri-state area, maybe. <laughs> I wonder if people think we have a crazy accent. I mean, people usually say I have an accent. People out here say that I have yeah, an accent. Yeah, people say I got an accent too. I had to like ditch some words and phrases. Ooh. Ah, that Mysterio is so delicious. That is wild. Yeah, it is. Fucked his eyes up. Yeah, that was a very uh, legendary scene. This is a cool movie, I think. Uh, through and through. This factory scene kind of like makes it cooler. Makes up for a lot of it. And like, not saying the, there just that one scene with the fucking yardstick really ruined it for me, honestly. What was that already? I forget. Oh, like the, the teacher. teacher. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, this fucking you, tiny Catholic school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's not why it sucked though. You know, it's just like really though. You gonna beat it? You gonna beat a woman to death with a yardstick until it bleeds? Like I can't imagine that. It's gonna take so many whacks. That looks like Tetsu in the Iron Man. Doesn't it? <laughs> it's all body hard out. I wonder what are, what are we gonna watch next time? That's a good question. We need suggestions. I think we need people in the comments to tell us some like movies. Something dark. Yeah, please. We, if you, we go dark, but that you, can mean anything. That's a mm -hmm. wide spectrum. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you guys are listening at this point, um, listen, follow us on Instagram. We'll probably uh, post a question or something on the stories. I say like you know, just give us some suggestions. We'll post it on our personal accounts. We'll post it on our uh, on our um, Mescal podcast account. Yes, 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 yes. Mescal talk. Mescal talk. We should just do that for a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> wow, people are still listening. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm sorry, guys. Over and over and over again. This ending scene has a lot like sour notes. <laughs> Doesn't this ending feel like Terminator 2, though? Where, like, uh, T-1000, yeah? Oh, all the steamy, yeah. like, factory vibes. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that it's, like, a kid-driven, though, too, you know? It's, like, such a different type. It's like a Home Alone of horror movies. It's fucking Home Alone, <laughs> No, but, like, for real, like, all the camera shots are, like, They're telling you Alex Epstein over here. No. Oh, my <laughs> God! <laughs> Come to my island. <laughs> Yes, please. The Home Alone fucking amusement park. Oh my <laughs> god. No, I like that movie specifically. That shit, I watch that every year for Christmas time. I watch Home Alone, I watch... Every year you watch Home Alone. Yep, and I watch it with uh, the Peanuts. I watch it with, uh, what other Christmas... I Elf. Elf is one that I watch every year. I just, I get really into the holidays, bro. Yeah. I'm just super into it. <laughs> I'm on my island. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking hard. <laughs> I mean, I think the Epstein Island's still on sale. Sure it is, yeah. If it's like, you know, what's the, what's the they house? They just sold the mansion, I heard, in, in uh, New York. Epstein has a mansion in New York? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ, bro. Who would it, was like, it was like the number one, like, co highest cost real estate or something. Really? In a particular neighborhood. See, what's crazy about that is, like, we just still don't really know what the fuck was up with that. You know, like, because a lot I mean, of... Hmm? What, what do you mean? No, it's up with what? Because a lot of people say that the Epstein shit, like, he wasn't, like, the front-runner guy, you know? He's, like, still, like, just, like, in a way, the pimp, you know? He wasn't, like, the one that was, like, delivering him. He was the liaison. So, like, even though Ghislaine Mas Maxwell was as well, like, they were both part of some cogs, apparently, you know? Like, some other shit, like... I, yeah. I don't doubt that there's other people involved and other people in the food chain, but I think they're pretty high up in the food chain. I mean, I think they were. But there's someone that's higher up than them, but he took the fall for it. That's, that's what it is. And, like, you know, that's the reason why he's dead. Somebody bankrolling shit. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, like, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean like he was, like, the, like, you said the pimp. Like, I mean, he was still, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. He was still the main cog where he was, yeah. like, putting in... You know, he was that piece that made all the girls happen and all the rich Actually, people Actually, Ghislaine happen. Maxwell was that, though, you know, because she was the one that was, like, really, like... For the girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It made, it, he was the guy... Female, a female makes it, uh... It's a softer blood. Like, a female can bring yeah, in yeah, more yeah. females, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, like, fucking... That's so much more insidious, though, too, as well, you know? It's For sure. Right. But, like, yeah, I think they were both, like, equally cogs in the machine. Like, who the fuck knows what's happening? Like, I wouldn't even doubt that, I don't even know if there's, like, 
There's people above them, but I think it might have been people above them versus like one or two yeah, ring yeah. leaders, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I think there was just well, a conglomerate of like, yo, I'll throw in money on that. I'll put money in on yeah. it. There was a bunch of rich people just oh, like, so it terrible. was like, you know, when, like you're going out to get a fucking case of beer and you're getting all your friends to like, that's you know, so, you know, that's, like there was one rich guy who was like, yo, I know this dude that can get these girls for us and we all just need to put in X and Y to do this and just a bunch of like rich fucks uh, put in money. Dude, that sounds so like plausible and realistic honestly. Oh, that's fucking... Man, I think uh, we cracked the case, guys. <laughs> we cracked the yeah, case. It's not, no longer a well, mysterio. <laughs> the theory of the case, but... Not Mes- the people. Mescal mystery. Ching, ching. Mescal <laughs> mystery. I'm definitely going to put in the fucking law and order. That's, the, that's what the thing is, like, once you have a few mescals and, like, your superhuman thinking, like, <laughs> and deductive yeah. reasoning kicks in, and then you're like, ah, I can solve mysteries. Yes, yes. So all my math majors, make sure you get fucking drunk <laughs> off of the mescal before your test. <laughs> Unlock, you know, it's like limitless, you know? It's like Adderall. Limitless. It's like yes. Adderall, you know? You just take a couple sips of fucking it's better Adderall. than Adderall. Fuck Adderall. Adderall. Hey man, don't talk shit on Adderall. Oh, you want to do an Adderall versus Mezcal tasting? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you gotta try these XRs though. You gotta try these. You gotta try this one. Yo, yo, this is the orange time release. <laughs> Dude, we parent way too much. We parent horror movies with Mezcal. We don't need Adderall. Or Crushed covered. up. Sprinkled on the orange instead of the salt. Hey, I'm with it. That sounds amazing. Next thing, <laughs> yeah. we got Molly and Mescal. <laughs> Dippers, you just like stick this in the. Oh my <laughs> god, fuck. So, yeah, if you guys ever see any future episodes and we're just grinding our teeth and we're just like, we're just going ham on like these crazy adjectives, just know it's fucking it's, the Adderall edition. Yeah. <laughs> Molly Mondays. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, so uh, credits are rolling. Rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> Shut up. Slept in weeks. <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. Nah, that's cool. We've been sleeping good. Alright. Oh, you haven't been sleeping that great, huh? What do you mean? Nah, I don't know. I thought we were talking the other day. Oh, uh, oh, oh. I don't know. I don't know. We can wrap it up. Wrap it up, B. <laughs> Child's Play 2, Siete Mysterios, Mescaloteca, yes. uh-huh. Luminaire, yep, yep. Alex, yes, sir. Gare, Mescal Talk. Shit. <laughs>